Hello there, Kyle Katarn here, continuing my work on the R2-D2 build-up model from Fanhome. Assembly is well underway, and when I've completed construction, I will have a fully armed and operational battle station. Well, actually, it's going to be a one-half scale R2-D2 model um, with a functional movable camera, lights, and aut autonomous mode. I mean, and you can control the entire thing manually from an app on a smartphone, which is awesome. But first, we have to build it, so let's keep going. If you want to check out the previous assembly stages, you will find a playlist of this entire build on my YouTube channel. All right, let's continue. So this package contains three, four, five, and six, and a whole lot of parts. This is going to be crazy. All right, so, and also one of the cool things about these builds is that they are all numbered based on the assembly stage. Except for this one. So presumably, this is three from process of elimination. Three, four, five, six. Very good. So, let's start with number three. We've got another awesome magazine here. Building R2-D2. The primary photoreceptor. Looks like that's going to be our objective today. And I remember I have a couple pieces of the primary photoreceptor left over from stage one. We're gonna get a deep dive on motion control filmmaking, which is awesome. That's how they filmed all the that's how they filmed all of the uh, the dog fights in the original trilogy. And droid directory, rebel astromech. We're gonna get a little bit more of a dossier on R2's rebel movements. Oh, this is so cool. Diagrams of how they did the motion control. Oh, this is this is a real treat right here. And it's fully up to date too. You'll notice that we're not only focusing on the original trilogy technology, we've also got like a little tidbit here from the Rise of Skywalker. I'm showing how that technology has evolved. That's really cool to see, honestly. R2 series, Industrial Automaton, getting some more of the in-universe background on the robot himself. <laughs> yeah, he does have a bilge pump, that's hilarious. That's one of the better moments in five better R2 moments. Okay, and then we're getting a little bit of coverage on PCB's printed circuit boards. I have noticed that every time something electronic comes up in an assembly stage, we get the relevant actual educational info in that um, accompanying magazine. I think that's really cool, actually. We'll learn about how they work. Okay, so the stage three parts have to do with R2-D2's right leg and head features. The right leg outer casing right here. Um, DP08, the primary photoreceptor extension, primary photoreceptor lens, um, and also in here, the control circuit board with test buttons. That all sounds very interesting. Let's go. The knife will do. If you're handy with a knife, you'll go far in life. That's what I always say. So, step one of stage three. You're gonna take the leg assembly from stage two together with the outer casing from this stage three. Okay, align these studs along the back here with these holes going down. Seems to be just popping in. Look at that. I'd say that's fairly recognizable as R2-D2's leg strut, wouldn't you? And interestingly, this one is all the way through, but this one doesn't seem to want to come out. What's the, what's the story there? All right, now we take the faceplate from stage one and the lens from stage three. This lens has a protective has a protective film on it. You just gotta be really careful when removing it that you don't scratch the surface at all. Wait, that's the tab. Shouldn't it take the whole thing off? There we go. Nice and clean. Let's try to keep it that way. Okay, you're gonna wanna take it and test fit it into, into place like so. Um, you could test fit it now to see the effect, but it's not gonna be retained in place until stage 10. So 
we're a little ways away. But that is what that looks like. Looks pretty good. Okay, you want to align the extension with the edge of the faceplate, uh, noting the rectangular slot in the faceplate and the corresponding tab on the extension. That's this right here. Got that little tab. And that's going to fit in right there. And now our faceplate is just a little bit longer. Okay, so now we're going to take that fully assembled state processor from stage one and we're going to attach it to the circuit provider that got provided here in stage two. Um, there are some labels on here. We've got out, test power. Okay, we're gonna take this plug that's attached to the end of the lead on the processor state indicator with the socket marked out. All right. Okay, and now we have a processor state indicator attached to a circuit board. Attaching that to that completes this stage. Um, you will be able to connect the processor state indicator and test it in the next stage. So now we have a completed leg assembly. Look at this. And a photoreceptor on its way to being completed and a processor state indicator connected to a control panel. All right, issue number four. So stage four, looks like it's got like a power pack in here. I'm interested to know what this is gonna entail. Connecting the processor state indicator. Okay, so there's our answer right there. Um, we're also gonna get an Inside Star Wars Filming R2-D2 Part 1 Droid Directory C-3PO. Protocol Droids Part 2. We got Part 1 about C-3PO back in uh, stage number two. Yeah, this is cool. Learning about performance capture. People like Andy Serkis and Armid Best. Cybot Galactica, creator of C-3PO. This is a nice little deep dive in universe on the lore behind him. I always thought it was one of the, the weirder stretches to have um, Anakin be the one to actually build C-3PO. A little, little on the nose. CMOS image sensors. Okay, see, this is where we get to learn about what it is we're doing here. Got the anatomy of a CMOS active pixel sensor over here. I'm talking about cost and power savings, image amplification, image quality. And here you go, here's a picture of what we've got. CMOS sensors have long been used in a wide range of imaging devices and are common in security cameras and digital microscopes. Similar technology will be hidden in the dark lens cover of your R2-D2's primary photoreceptor. Well, that's very cool. All right, stage four, R2-D2's right leg and battery box. Okay, so for step one of stage four, we're gonna need that right leg assembly we're gonna need the leg pivot cover, and we're gonna need that ankle plate. So if you look at the back of the metal pivot cover, you're gonna see two little tangs in the casting here and here. Uh, those are gonna correspond with holes in the back of the leg plate, notably here and here. So you wanna flip over the right leg and align the tangs with these notches in the space. Um, it uses a bayonet style covering, which allows you to rotate it and uh, remove it at any time. So there you go. You want to continue to twist it until the tang lock stops against these two little plastic notches above and below, right there. So you see those notches? No, we can't go any further than that. We're in a locked position. All right, now we flip her back over and we're going to align these bottom two holes with the studs on this ankle assembly. Looks like we want that side around. And they're coming through here and here. You want to align it with these other pins and just it just says press firmly into place. Um, as with a lot of other parts, it's going to be fixed permanently later on in the assembly, but for now, it's holding on right there. And this R2-D2 leg is really taking on shape now. Look at that thing. All right, and now the battery pack. All right, so for step number seven, we're going to take the battery box from this stage, the processor state indicator assembly that we've just created right here, and three AAA batteries. We've got a little plug on the end of this lead coming out of the battery box, and we're gonna align that with the other button on this test control right here. See where it says power. Makes sense. Power goes into the power slot. Is that how that works? Yeah, fits in right, like that. You wanna 
push till you hear a little click. Okay, we're gonna wanna undo and completely remove the screw on the bottom of this battery box here so we can add our batteries. This looks like a pretty straightforward step. So now we have a battery box, a test panel, and a processor state indicator. All right. So this is where get, this is where things get groovy. There's a power button right here. We're gonna switch that to on. The power is on. Now, if you look on the on the little test plate, you got these two little buttons on the end here, right? And they're labeled S1 and S2. When we push these, they're gonna test the colors of our processor state indicator. So let's take a look here. S1, here we go. Hey, look at that. It works. And S2. Ha ha! It lives! Oh, that's so cool. Beep, boop, beep. Oh shit, I'm getting pulled over, guys. Hang on a second. Awesome. Turn that back off again. That was a successful test of our ocular implant, the processor state indicator that's going to live in R2-D2's eyeball. So we have shored up our leg a little bit, and we've added the circuit for the eye. And that is stage four. All right, stage number five. Today we are fitting the central head bearing. Okay, look at that, the head bearing right here. And then we get more about the filming of R2-D2. And droid directory, Dio. Okay, cool, we're getting a deep dive on all the different droids. Oh, that's so cool. The making of, this is how they filmed the sand crawler. They only built the lower part of it there. I love it. I love seeing the little behind the scenes magic like this. We get a little, a little segment on recreating Tarkin uh, for Rogue One. That's awesome. We learn all about Dio, maker unknown. So I guess we don't learn all about Dio. There are still some questions about this little droid's past. Hopefully they get answered someday in a movie or a comic book. Speaking of comics, you wanna you wanna be reading the current Darth Vader line if you want some excellent moments with old Ochi of Bestoon over here. Okay, so rotary bearings. This is the relevant info to what we are going to be building today. Bearings are load-bearing components that are used in machines of all kinds, including robots, to allow parts to keep moving smoothly without quickly wearing out or becoming misaligned. Interesting, so this head bearing is gonna allow the dome to rotate, probably, without becoming misaligned, presumably. And pit droids, nice. Fun fact, the pit droid is my second favorite droid after the gonk. Okay, stage five, head bearing and frame components. We need a dome top plate, got it. A bearing and a bearing retainer, got those right there. A dome frame and a bunch of fixing nuts and fixing screws. Oh my goodness, okay, look at this. This is the chassis for R2's head right here. Okay, so for step one, we need the dome plate, the bearing and the bearing retainer, and two of the small silver screws. So as you can see in step one, the top of this has a central molding shaped kind of like a keyhole. Um, the bottom has a plain circular recess, which is the same size as the bearing. So we're gonna take this bearing and just seat it right in that recess. It is exactly the same size, so it fits totally flush in there. So in order to prevent the bearing from coming out of this recess, you're gonna wanna take the retainer and screw it in with those two little holes on the top and the bottom. Magnetic screws are like my favorite thing in the world. Whenever, it's at the point where whenever screws are non-magnetic, I'm like, how dare you? Okay. All right, the bearing is now held in place by the bearing retainer on the dome plate here. Okay, so now we're gonna turn the assembly over and we're gonna line this little triangular pointer um, with the matching pointer on the dome frame. That's this guy right here. Oh, I see a little, I see a little arrow right there and an arrow right there, so I guess that's where that goes. Seems pretty simple. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. So now we're going to be taking the fixing nuts and fix and resting them in these little hexagonal recesses above where the actual screws go in. You see those hexes right there? Um, I don't really know if I can hold this together with one hand, so I am just using gravity and sliding these nuts into place. There we go. Now, 
using my fingers to hold them in place, I'm gonna flip the whole thing over like this. And I'm gonna be taking some of the longer silver screws, which would be these guys, and putting them in those holes. So, so I'm holding them in place with my fingers so that those nuts don't fall out. And then we're taking a screw and coming in from the other side. Come on, screw. And then we're just gonna stick this guy right through. And there you go. And you know what? Looking at this, I wonder if this has something to do with this. Nah, it's too close to the top of the dome. Never mind. All right, so this is the end of step five. Now we have our completed head assembly, which you can see here. Um, and it's worth noting that it also came with a ton of screws and washers and nuts and bolts that we gotta keep track of because they're gonna become useful in a later stage. Step number six. Got some more electronics coming this time. Building R2-D2's diagnostic display. Awesome. Um, and we're going to get some more about filming R2-D2. And Droid Directory EGL Power Droids. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Talking about some Gonk Droids by Industrial Automaton. They're my favorites. This is awesome. A whole bunch about the filming of the book. The R2-D2 scenes. This is the Docking Bay 94 sequence. Yes. Look at this. Look at this gloriousness. The EGL power droids from Veriline, as seen here in the Phantom Menace. Um, and then, of course, the more classic model, as seen in uh, everything from Star Wars Rebels up here to the original trilogy. That's great. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, LCDs, liquid crystal displays. That means that that is what our little diagnostic indicator is going to be. The LCD shutter system. Look at this. This is specifically the type of technology being utilized in our little uh, diagnostic display that's going to be showing up on R2-D2 here. R2-D2's diagnostic display. The parts provided are used to assemble prominent feature on the right of R2-D2's dome, the luminescent diagnostic display, which consists of a matrix of flashing colored dots. This is based on an LCD screen controlled by a logic chip which you will be able to fit into its housing. You can check that it's working using the same test circuit you used in stage 4. Referring to this test circuit, which we built. Checklist. We've got our LCD screen, our LCD power lead, a mounting bracket, the inner frame, and the housing. Oh, cool. I like it when we get an exploded view. That really helps you see what it is you're going to be doing here. So in addition to all these components right here, which come from stage number five, we're also going to need uh, the battery pack and the test panel that we created, as well as all of the black screws that came with stage five. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take the inner frame and the LCD housing, and we're going to insert it like this. Make sure that it fits in there. All right, and once you've got that in there like this, we'll see how it fits. All right, then we're gonna take our LCD screen, gently remove the little strip off of here. Oh uh, yeah. Now, we're gonna fit these two pieces together. And the easy way to keep it straight is that we've got these little tabs on the top and the bottom. They fit into these little notches on the top and bottom of the LCD board. So I'm going to try and align that first notch right there. And that bottom notch and boom. Next, we're going to take the mounting bracket. And we're going to line it up with the assembly from that previous stage like this. Now we've got a nice little screen. Now that the screen is safely encased inside this assembly housing, we're going to add some screws to seal the deal. When I'm screwing um, four screws into an object, I like to do opposite corners first. Some people like to start with one side and then do the other side. I like to go diagonal like that. It doesn't really make a difference. That's just my personal preference. All right, once it's all screwed in, we have an LCD screen in a housing. We'll look at that. And what do you know? It's got a little power adapter on the side. So why don't we connect this bad boy and test it out? Go back to our battery pack and our testing board and let's plug it in, shall we? Battery pack on. Oh my goodness. 
How cool is that, you guys? I'm actually really proud of myself right now because I am useless with electronics, so... Hell yeah, that's so cool! And this is the diagnostic assembly um, that shows you how R2-D2 is feeling. It works kind of like a, an Astromex mood ring on the side of his dome. Yep, and there you have it. That is the sixth completed assembly stage. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for the next video containing the following assembly stages. I've added a link in the description of this video to the Fan Home website where you can pick up an R2-D2 build-up model of your own, complete with a promo code that'll give you a discount. Thanks again, and as always, may the Force be with you.